Hello, everyone. We are back for just a, a smaller session today. Our, our celestial cousins are off visiting family in both real life and in game. So we have the episode I am affectionately calling A King and His Assassin. <laughs> and we will definitely be breaking off into random tangents like we were just talking about all the emotes we need to make if once I get to affiliate status with this channel. Um, the, the bonk is a definite because the bonk works for everything. Uh, oh, yeah. Dancing unicorns. <laughs> oh, my God. Especially, especially if we can get to the animated emote status we need. Like, <laughs> yes, uh, because Twitch was just telling me that I could turn off animated emotes, but like yeah. unicorns has to be in there, preferably get, dancing. Oh, if we get two, we need one. We get one of a galloping unicorn, and the next one a gyrus chasing it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, because I'm going to buy that CG model of a blue dragonborn, and I'm going to. Just make that our opener is Gyalif chasing <laughs> unicorns. I mean, it's not even that expensive. It's like 25 bucks. It was a great deal. Nice. But, you know, I'm trying to buy a house, so I can't even afford to put, you know, to be funneling money into the show right now until, you know, I get the house and everything. But of I have to be a responsible adult, and I hate that. With every mm. fiber of my being, I hate being an adult. <laughs> But this small step will allow me to do more stupid things with more time devoted to the stupid things. So yeah, it's worth it. That's right. I will, I will be a responsible adult so I can be a bigger idiot every day of the week. Now, we were actually going to be productive today, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> productive. Before we continue, we'd like, we like to thank our partner, Ma Energy Drink. <laughs> Holy crap, green screen. <laughs> I got you covered. Hold on a minute. I forgot the label screen. <laughs> I keep the blue one. In fact, let me let me make it a little bit easier to see. Oh. <laughs> what kind of magnifier is that? It's, this is a magnifier for camera lenses. So whenever oh. we need to have a, a, a serious conversation, I need you to listen to me. This this works a little better in practice than it did in, but yes, you uh, wow, you just, okay. You just put this up to your, you put this up to your camera, and you can do things like this. Oh, that is now cool. most cameras don't have that little LED on the lens because that's working against me. Okay. But we can also just do this, <laughs> and then I get your reflection. This works so much better in practice than it did in. <laughs> of course. But I saw this on Film Riot and uh, I like, oh, yeah, I have to get this. <laughs> I, of course. Because I got this and then I got like the uh, the prism lens, which is a sort of a, a pyramid shape. And you can use it to get some interesting, uh, you know, reflections and everything. But yes. We're brought to you by Ma Energy. There's a link down at the bottom. Get your 60 servings for just the price of shipping today. Ma! <laughs> Perfect. All right. <laughs> Our partners are happy. <laughs> yes. We have appeased the people with money. Yeah. <laughs> No, but did, really things like this, up. on top of just fueling our antics, and yes. I, I'd say we're all uh, candidates for Ritalin. <laughs> that seems like a given for most streamers I know. Uh, uh -huh. On top of that, you know, it is something that lets us do this more often and with better production. Much like how I just said, I will buy a house so that way I can do more stupid things. <sighs> so, Helping to fund our show allows us to do more stupid things in a more professional setting. Professional? What are you talking about? Oh, that's where I give you money to show up and act like a fool? Oh, that's right. right. That's <laughs> perfect. perfect. That's... Uh, yeah, that's my idea of being a professional. <laughs> like, we're not going to be good. We're just going to have more time to be goofy. We're like Mythbusters, but without, you know, the training of, in engineering experience or the license in pyrotechnics. Oh, yeah. Because that's another thing. If 
uh, as I was talking earlier, is if I wind up being able to buy a small farm area, I'm definitely building my own forge out of scrap w stone and making a sword out of scrap metal. Like, that's not even a joke. I will do it. You know, another reason to go down into the, the links below and uh, <laughs> buy a shirt from uh, our Designed by Humans. I'm not wearing one today, but I've got some fun ones. One of my favorite has somebody that looks a lot like Skeletor saying that uh, villains taught me never to give up. Because it's easy to keep mm -hmm. coming back when you're the winner every week. But Skeletor, he had to keep trying and trying again. He failed every week. But you know what? Next week, he's back with a new plan. That's not that's mention, commitment. Not that's, to mention the guy's commitment to physical fitness was such that he was just as ripped as he man. Oh I yeah, mean, come on. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I I need to get in shape. I need to start trying to. Uh, I don't know if I can be as ripped as Skeletor, you know. But but that's going to be my uh, new. That's my new goal to be in the same shape as an animated guy from the eighties. <laughs> oh God, uh, I just realized. They made Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 80s look like a skinny guy. <laughs> that's a that's a bad role model. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, there's a shirt by, designed by humans. Uh, Ma Energy, you can buy trick rolls for these players and myself, which has let some really weird things happen when we get to multiply a roll by 1d4. It gave us the yes look we eat. Uh, it has uh, enabled them to beat fictional people from a storybook. And I mean, like, a demon that wasn't supposed to have been beatable? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, you guys weren't supposed to completely ruin uh, the tale of the waves and have it uncompleted when you got kicked out. Oh. That, that wasn't at all one of my plans. <laughs> I'm not a horrible person. But uh, let's actually get to some story today, because I can do this for hours. Right. Hanging, hanging out with these guys is too easy. So... Uh, because your celestial, your uh, ASMR companions have gone off to visit some family, Joseph has decided this is a good chance to start working on his uh, communications network, the Rogues Alliance, if you will. I don't know what you're going to call it. The, so, um, the, the ROU. Which means... He froze up before he could tell us, leaving us in suspense. Right. The rogues of underground. We, we could not understand that. You froze. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for my compression. Okay, do you want to say that again, Kyle? The rogues, the rogues, the rogues organization underground. Rogues, rogues organization. Do you have to give the little French accent on that one? <laughs> yes, yes, it does. It has to have the French accent. Right, the rogues under uh, organization <laughs> underground. <laughs> Let's I, see how I, well. I'm gonna, we I'm gonna start sounding like spy from Team Fortress Two. If I, the more I say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I now need to make some changes to my notes. There will be an entire <laughs> French group. <laughs> Let's see how long I can keep that accent up when they yeah. show up. Welcome to the Federation <laughs> Anglo Ground. We are the French, the others are the losers. <laughs> Which one are you? <laughs> so. Kyle, <laughs> Joseph, Jyleth. I will definitely screw those names up. <laughs> you would think after this long I could get your fictional names right, but I can barely get your real names right. <laughs> oh. Okay, so uh, there's a few ways you can get started. One, there was the, uh, the rumor of some bandits outside of the boundary of Evalia. You could always go on uh, a caravan delivering some turnips, you know, just to see who you run into. Or you uh -huh. can travel to a bigger city like uh, Iron Rook to uh, connect with a larger, more established rogues guild. Uh, 
Jyleth? Yes. Shall we deal with the bandits first and then go on to Ironbrook? The fine deal with because I have misinterpreted that in the past before. <laughs> Make them part of my organization and not leave them dangling for their crimes? All right, he puts his sword back. <clears throat> All right. I pull my sword out. <laughs> start heading out. <laughs> oh, it's the other way around. Grab the sword. And... <laughs> well, it might end up coming to that, but at the same time, they're bandits. They might require me to, like, I don't know, beat the snot out of the strongest one or steal a saber-toothed tiger's tusk. The way you're saying you need backup. It's not that I'm saying I'll need backup. I'm just making that it a you very need strong backup. I got it. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you uh you hook up with the uh the turnip caravan because turnips are like the only thing that grows in Evolia for some reason. Uh and it's truly a blessing <laughs> by the gods. <laughs> We're just not saying which gods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the god of turnip smiles upon you, but his smile is kind of like, meh. I just, I just imagined a, a turnip with a like googly eyes and then just a sharpie little meh face on it. The the largest turnips are turned into uh you know jack o' lantern cell things. <laughs> Do a piece of the, the way to the harvest. Yes. yes, there are very large turnips that can be carved into masks for some people. You know, they just stick them on their heads and run around with them. And There's not I, a lot of entertainment in Evalia. Yeah, and when asked, like, why since when have you been doing this? Oh, but is this a tradition? Oh, <laughs> is this a way to hoard us from demons or any some, some horrible threat? Oh, exactly. Is something we're doing since my father, my father before him, my <laughs> father before him. <laughs> so it's a tradition with no origin. <laughs> exactly. And it's <laughs> all been the father's handing it down. The mothers are like, stop doing that. But Ridiculous. my father before him. <laughs> well, Ooh. now you see here, boy, you, you, you see here, boy, we don't question where traditions come from. We just follow them. As we don't want to disregard the ways of our forefathers when they came across this land. <laughs> this said by the uh, the rooster style Aarakocra that lived there. <laughs> <laughs> this is please just going to be me, a, a throwback. Tell reference. me that's the driver while just Joseph and Dryla just in the back. And just yes, waiting. <laughs> you are being driven by a rooster like Aarakocra. Who's telling you about everything you can do with the turnip? Well, I say, I say you can turn them into a pie, but not know me. People want to eat that their pie. Uh, if it's large enough, you can carve eye holes into it and wear it on your head after you've hollowed it out. I heard there are some people who make turnip candy. I have yet to have a, a candy turnip that I would turn down. But then again, I'm not going to say that I have enjoyed them either. Joseph, I see why the candy shops were a hot hit in this town. <laughs> what, 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 what? Oh. I kind of, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were sleepy. <laughs> I didn't know I was either. <laughs> you you pass by uh, the borders of Ivalia where the, uh, the headsman is shining the skulls on the post. He hasn't gotten any new heads in a while. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Ah, uh, quite well, my king. Will there be any new heads for the post this month? There's a good chance. Maybe on our way back. Okay, just let us know. His name's not Steve. I just don't know what his name is, so I just call him Steve. <laughs> Joseph, it's wake Ro up. <laughs> it's Roquefort. His name is Roquefort. I mean, he, he runs into us at the pub every Sunday. <laughs> I told you my memory is like as good as a rotten Indiana potato. 
what's in what, what's Indiana? Where I where is this? Myth- I don't know. It's just a place he also tells me about. It's not very exciting. Sorry for the people in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think they'll agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> is it anything like Nebraska then? Because Nebraska is apparently this this place filled with this mythical fruit or vegetable called maize. The Nebraska was somewhere in the Arctic. No, that's Wisconsin, apparently. The Nebraska <laughs> sounds like an ice planet or something. It also sounds like a desert. I'm just waiting for just an arrow to just, <laughs> just come whizzing by and we're just still having this conversation. <laughs> oh, I was going to let it keep going for a few more minutes. Nebraska! <laughs> but... As you move out a few more miles, eventually there are two people who are standing by the side of the road. It's like, I say, I say now, we're about to come across some trouble, I think, I think. Joseph, that's our cue. Just slowly hiding my sword and trying to make eye contact with the two people that they're on the road. <laughs> and they are wearing a mix matched uh dirty suits with their leathers and one of them says have you paid the toll to use this here road why is everybody amish today that's a problem <laughs> I, was, I was about to say i'm like not that far from norway and sweden and i'm just like is this guy Norse or sense <laughs> Don't ask where my accents originate from. We're I could have been five continents at once. Sorry, we have our, see, we're like a 15 minutes in. We've gone the five accents so far. <laughs> well, have, now, well, now, Bjorn, you're standing there in the middle of the road and you're not moving. Of course we pay that toll. I kind of look at each other. <laughs> Uh, they, they said they already paid the toll. That's, that's, that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> now you can't have paid the toll because th- there's no one to collect the toll. There is no toll. Now pay us the toll. Bjorn, what happened to your accent? <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to go talk with Speedich again? <laughs> no. They uh I'm already Lou. <laughs> when you when you told them you already paid the toll, they got very confused and they dropped all semblance of their professional manner. <laughs> we, they got off script. What it was just <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> they, like, basically, they were not prepared for the improv class. <laughs> and like, uh You know, they're just kind of like Dennis. Uh, this this isn't working the way it's supposed to work. I don't know it, what's supposed to work. We say the line, we take the money. That's how it's supposed to work. Um, should we just kill them? Hmm. <laughs> and they're having this conversation loud yeah, enough yeah. that you can hear it. Yeah, I can imagine. And then Joseph, who lost track, and Joseph's like, "All right, Joseph, what's the plan, Joseph?" We're just we're just letting them talk, and if they feel like as if they're about to do what I think that they're about to do, we're just going to go Karen on them and demand a manager. <laughs> what does uh, that mean? It means we're going to ask to see their boss. But how how does the hiring process? We go right to the boss. Are we negotiating contracts or something? Your driver is very confused by both groups yeah. right now. Wait, conversation over here, conversation over here. I'm just going to keep on going if y'all don't <laughs> mind. Right, how about this? Joseph, you lead and I follow. I thought that was already the plan. Good, you're on the right page. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph pops off the cart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jo- Joseph is just going to going to, to place a hand gently on 
Sir Leghorn's shoulder and go, we'll be right back. And then he'll jump down from the <laughs> cart heading towards Dennis and Bjorn. Yes. <laughs> it's Dennis and Denzel, actually, because I'm stealing <laughs> these characters from somebody else. I just messed up the accent. <laughs> If you happen to know who Dennis and Denzel are, well, then good for you, because you are a man of culture. <laughs> hey. Well, now, Zan, you're, 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 you're taking so long. Do I have to get your manager involved? Because here oh. we are, having already paid our toll, and here you are standing in front of us. But the, there ain't nowhere to pay the toll. We're the, we're the toll collector. This is taking too long. Yeah, this is taking too long. They they draw a dagger. Give us your money. I draw my rapier. <laughs> Mine's bigger. <laughs> and I know how to handle it better. Meanwhile, try to... <laughs> <laughs> I think Jolly needs to make an intimidation check with the oh, gladly. <laughs> This is the first time we're on intimidation. How long have I played this character? <laughs> Just now use intimidation that I just now realize I have a skill in. <laughs> Jalus usually doesn't have to get that persuasive. He just like me, brother. I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> That's a ten. A ten. Like <laughs> you could barely lift that thing. It's just like clear, like twitching of the arm. At which point, um, Joseph just looks between the two and drops all semblance of any sort of fun with this. His armor starting to smoke as he just, with a 20, <laughs> stares at them and goes, I do believe I need to see your boss now. Okay, let me make some rolls here. So one of them, the one that uh, is named Dennis, kind of puffs up his chest. Oh, I'm the one in charge here, and I say that you're going to give me everything you've got. The other one is running away. At which point, the second that he says, <laughs> you're going to give me everything that you've got, um... Joseph just kicks him right in the groin. <laughs> okay, make an attack roll. Eight. Was, eight. <laughs> Unarmed attack with an eight. You you miss. You come within, like, like you kick out, but you were like a foot away. So this would be a good time to roll initiative. Okay. This is a weird way to ask for the boss. <laughs> Well, he said he was the boss. And now I'm going to show him who's the boss. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys get? I got a nine. Eleven. <laughs> you know what? You somehow beat these two still. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jos it's Jylif, Joseph, then Denzel and Dennis. All right, Joseph, you want me to get the runner or get the one you <laughs> right here? Get the runner. All right, so how far has the, at, at this moment, has how far has the runner gotten? I would say within this amount of time, he's got about 15 feet away. All right, 15 feet. All yes. Right. All right, so I'm going to just have a Jarlis do a full on charge and with his legs, he's just basically going to go for a tackle. Okay. That sounds like it would be a, an unarmed attack. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's an eight. You an have eight. you have cursed me, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you uh you leap out at him, but you you miss by a foot. <laughs> now uh this just makes Denzel run faster. But it's Joseph's turn, so Joseph is frozen again. Probably in shock at everything that's happening so badly. 
No, I'm not frozen again. I your eyes, you, oh, you're standing there with your eyes closed then. No, I'm, you're, I'm good. I promise your picture is freezing. Oh, God. Ah! Okay. Well, Thank we shall, you, we shall overcome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we shall overcome this by using the blunt end of the rapier and smacking it across <laughs> so the, uh, the one he's Do rapiers with. have a blunt end? Yes, they do, actually. Okay. Um, Spanish rapiers and, and Portuguese rapiers actually do have a blunt end because they're um, two-sided designed for slashing. Wow, I am a nerd. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 24! 24 hits. For seven. Okay. you. So you smack him pretty hard across the face. Mm -hmm. Now, that guy's attention, because he was uh, too busy looking at his partner running away, and then after the dragonborn that chased after his partner, who is going to dash and run 60 feet, well, he turns on you, Kyle, and he is going to attack with a 16. Actually meets... Okay. So yeah, he does hit. And he is going to do seven points of slashing damage. And he's going to attack again with a natural 20. Good lordy. So let me roll again to see if he does. Okay, he doesn't do any um, <clears throat> like lasting damage, but you will take 14 points of slashing damage. Hearing a lot of clicking in silence. Like two words. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> hmm. Has has yeah. the ROU fallen already? Oh, I hope. No. That, I okay. Hope gods. Okay, because these guys. I did just pull up a random staff, but I didn't think they'd be that much of a challenge <laughs> to you. Uh, okay. So this, is, so this is how we go to Valhalla. I'm just kidding. Giles. <laughs> I will say you were able to turn your, your attack into a roll and you're back on your feet, but the other guy is 60 feet away now. Okay, so it's going to be a hunch. So, but, and I know you described their particle thing. Is there like a cape or anything that is part of their attire? So if I were to throw a trident, I can go for a pinning action by throwing it. I like it, so I'll <laughs> allow it. Okay. Unfortunately, it's going to be disadvantaged because it's past that range, but I want to just imagine he's just yeah. left for a moment. And uh, before you do this, I will warn you that there's going to be basically a scale here for success. If you do yeah. really well, you can pin him. If you do really poorly, you're still pinning him, but not through escape. All right. <laughs> and if you do really bad, then you're you're going to hit a foot away from him. <laughs> I imagine. I know I'm stealing a line from here, but I know Jyleth was saying this. Like, Don't tell me the odds. Okay. <laughs> All right. So disadvantage, trident throw. Oh, boy. Here we go. 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 Oh, okay. With disadvantage, 14 plus 6, that's dirty 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me roll for him. <laughs> Because he is running, that would be a disadvantage. So, he's <laughs> running. His tattered, once respectable cloak suddenly gets slammed into the ground, and he <laughs> gets clotheslined by his own clothing as his feet keep on going, but his neck and head kind of get whiplash, and he hits the ground. And then I just imagine... <clears throat> Charles would just use his full 30 feet to just to try to catch up. So it's just that, just like he gets close on and it's just a full on heavily armored dragon board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he comes out of that day, that's going to be terrifying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's everything for Giles. Okay. Joseph? Yeah. Joseph's just going to strike this uh, leader with, with uh, both of his rapiers, just one right after the other. Okay. So the first one is 15. Uh, 15 hits. For nine slashing, uh, for nine uh, piercing damage, sorry. And that kills him. 
I'm sorry. Did you think these guys were particularly effective? I did not mean to make them sound like they were competent. They just got lucky. I need a clip of this. Kyle's reaction. So this guy was all big and like, yeah, I just cut up pretty boy here. And then suddenly there's a sword in his heart. <laughs> just kick the body <laughs> and go, Jylan. <laughs> you just, the moment Jylan doesn't respond, but you're just hearing the clinging and the clanging of his armor as he's just running. Speaking <laughs> of which, it's now that guy's turn. Let's see. He, uh, He's not able to get himself dis detangled because the sight of a armored dragon board running upside <laughs> down at him. He's too busy trying to figure out how is he running on the sky? And why is the sky brown? And why is the grass blue? <laughs> and why is Dennis falling over with his blood spraying out? This is all very unusual. I, I imagine this perfectly. <laughs> That's exactly what he sees right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is all highly unusual. I can I flip my source, but I can't flip the freaking background with me. <laughs> oh, Jyleth, what did you do with uh, poor Denzel? I imagine he's at this moment using intimidation as he's just basically just like one foot on his chest, not applying pressure, just yeah. the first stance. <laughs> it's simple. We would like you to be recruited. Or you can choose death. Your pick. <laughs> what was that first one again? The, the first intimidation? No, no. The, he's asking what was recruitment. You can either join us or death. Uh, doing what? Here, I'll meet, I'll let you meet my associate. So he just grabs the trident and just like, like tight bro hug him and make sure he can't escape and just walks with him all the way back to Joseph. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, Joseph, good. I got one. Poof. And just... You know, how Joseph is just looking from the body on the ground to the other guy. The body oh, I say your, I say your interview did not go well. No, <laughs> he lied on his CV. He made it appear much better than it actually was. I turned to uh, the other guy. Uh, very understandable. All right. Introduce yourself, and it's just like the new recruit. <laughs> oh. I'm Denzel. <laughs> All right, Denzel. Denzel, I'll offer him my hand to shake. <laughs> he kind of very confused, shakes your hand. So. We're looking, or we were looking for a few good men to um, start acting as a toll service here to actually start giving us information on who was coming in and out of uh, Evalia. I kick his friend's um, body and then look at him. So, since you appear to already be doing a slight portion of our job for us, would you like to be more legitimate and have a bit more training and just keeps nudging his toe at his dead friend going and and have a backing behind you that isn't as squishy? He kind of thinks for a minute. Is it a clean legitimacy? Oh, yes. As you see, as we work in the ways of so back at the castle, we can negotiate the levels of our payroll and benefits and, ins and ensure that you have the utmost protection of words in our indeed workforce. 
he's just kind of looking back at his cloak because my last legitimacy got holes in it. Oh, yes. Mm. One could say it had a gaping point of security that got exploited. <laughs> he gets a very confused look on his face. What? He didn't put his whole heart into his effort. He kind of looks down at his friend like, so we're supposed to put his heart in my cloak? Just get to the point, Joseph. He said no and stabbed me. Well... That's not very nice. He he has no clue what you're talking about. Like, you don't even need uh, an insight roll to see that you confuse this man. First, you're talking about uh, a new set of clothes, and then you're talking about cutting out hearts. He okay. lost a, he lost his conversation a while back. But anyway, but then we do offer benefits. If you have any friends who would like to join us, we do have a referral program. So do you have any friends who would be interested in employment? Yeah. Points at Dennis on the ground. Thank you for that referral. (laughs) (sighs) Dennis is the one that told me this was going to work and he spent months planning it. And this was our first time out. And I don't know, we didn't really plan for people to, you know, not pay the toll. That was, it was, we, we ask them for the toll. They give us the toll and then we decide whether or not we're going to kill them. Ah. Right. Tell you what, I'm going to go and assist your friend now and my associate Joseph will, will help you for the paperwork. And he'll just take the body over his shoulder and just kind of walk off and just kind of look at Joseph and just like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph is going to take care of a body. <laughs> By going back to Steve. <laughs> Assuming we're not too far from Steve. <laughs> no, uh, you, you, can bring, you can bring him over to Steve. Okay, so that's where Jyla is going. These guys set up shop like less than a mile away from the border. <laughs> Perfect. So, right. have you had any previous training in regards to arts of breaking and entering, lock picking, any smithing, any lock smithing work of any sort? Oh yeah. Uh, once we broke in by uh, hitting the the window with a hammer. And crawling through the hole. There was this little old lady in there and she started screaming, so we hit her with a hammer. <laughs> and then we had a pie. It was resting on the window next to the one we broke. Just takes out a small notebook from inside of his <laughs> inside of his tunic and starts writing down. Okay. And before that, were there anything, was there anything else that you had done, such as childhood escapades or any formal? No, thing? we don't steal from children. They ain't got nothing. But if you take the kid of a rich guy, then you can get something. We might need to deduct a bit more from your paycheck for training and equipment than I realized, but you're on board. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Jesse does have a prop for everything. <laughs> it's just that moment like right on the fence. Uh-huh. Dennis is now a part of the uh, of your <laughs> he, he is part of the evolutourism program. Yay! <laughs> and 
Denzel is going to be having to go through extensive training just to get him up to the basics. <laughs> but you have one thug in your employ. All right. Mission accomplished. <laughs> getting good at interviews because <laughs> i won't make you go through uh any more recruiting of denzel he's just an idiot <laughs> he's confused by any words over two syllables honestly i'm trying to now imagine on the next day <laughs> yeah. well, we, how's recruitment gonna go today Joseph? <laughs> We're going to Ironbrook. Okay. So it takes a, a little while to get to Ironbrook. It'll be, uh, you know, a few weeks of travel, but we're going to hand wave all travel expenses, you know, because it's just a short episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, Joseph, jo Joseph, Jylus, and Trainee <laughs> go together. Oh, God, you're bringing Denzel with you. Okay. Oh, yeah. there's He, he has a special tunic that say Trainee on it on his way there. And he wears it with pride. Yes. He think uh, he's it's like, like it's like the colors of like the student driver you see on cars. <laughs> yes. It's it's also got on the back. If found, please return to with the cap <laughs> transfer <to> the castle. <laughs> that is very important, actually. Perfect. Now so. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this in allies. One trainee thug. Oh, yeah. Eventually, we will uh, get him some sort of uh, a better stat block, but, you know, a trainee thug will be just fine. So, you eventually make your way to Iron Rook. Now, Joseph, this is probably an area you know quite well from your background. Yes. It Especially. is, a, is a, a country that's on the border of a mountain, on the other side, no one uh, is a country nobody really bothers with because it's a frozen wasteland. But the cold winds make Iron Rook a cold place, and it is the home of various iron mines and probably one of the worst prisons ever to be conceived called Rot Iron. Oh, this is Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have more huskies. Or are they huskers? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> guess looks good on our mission. We can't ask her. Oh, no. That reminds me the next time that I see yes, like I need to talk with her. Uh, me too. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, trainee. <laughs> yes. He, he's, he's like, you know, if he, he's got suspenders and so he's just showing off that trainee. Doesn't know what the word means because he can't read. But He's, er he's earning two silver an hour. <laughs> oh, you're vastly overpaying this man. Copper. <laughs> You they think Gyleth knows the value of money? No, I do not. <laughs> He's just like, I just what? know every time he sees a, a, a pretty fancy woman walk by, he just kind of points his, you know, his trainee shirt to her, like, <laughs> "Hey there, I'm a trainee for them. I got legitimacy." And they walk a little faster. He's flashing his employment. I love it. <laughs> but, I, but I still have a perfect picture of when they're negotiating pay. And it's like, all right, what's the, what's the equivalent of a safe pay rate for peasants? Well, silver. Oh, no one uses those. Silver. Because <laughs> he's used to, at this point, gold, platinum, like maybe, maybe the elusive electrum, but. <laughs> So, like, anything below gold is just like, ah, this is peasant. Yes. <laughs> peasant pay. <laughs> yes. And I, and I imagine Joseph didn't correct Jyleth on that. No. 
because <laughs> Joseph was just still trying to, to find something to heal from the headache that was <laughs> <laughs> the interview process. Uh, understandable. And then Mr. Foghorn, who's telling you about the value of turnips. Because turnips are actually the main, you know, like, whenever he has to pay the taxes to go into the city, it's literally just handing them a couple of bags of turnips. So, so it checks out. Turnip soup, turnip soup do, turnip sandwiches, turnip sauces, turnip. <laughs> I thought you were going to say turnip sausages. And I'd be like, how does that work? <laughs> Oh, well, now let me tell you about turnip sausage. First, oh, God, guys... no! <laughs> what do you use as casing? The turnip skin? No, don't Oh, so you that. are aware don't... of turnip sausage. <laughs> Is he our Uber driver now? Are we that cheap? <laughs> no, no. I, uh, he, he was just a caravan that was heading out. Okay, good. He doesn't uh... even live in Ebola. <laughs> He's just the guy that comes by to pick okay, up the Okay, good. I was about to say, like, if this is our ride, everywhere we go in this. <laughs> no, no. I, I won't do that to you guys or the audience. <laughs> Right, no, good. he was he was just a guy who was contracted to bring the turnips because the farmers never really leave the area. Makes sense. All right, JJ and Trainee, we continue on. Okay. Yeah, so you're now inside Iron Rope, which is a much larger city. Maybe something Gilus is used to from his soldiering days. Yeah. Joseph spent some time here. Yes. <clears throat> Matter of fact, you, you... You just see Joseph just sort of eye the direction of the prison and just kind of pull his, his cloak a bit higher around <clears throat> himself. And then he looks at the trainee and goes, stay close. Do not touch anyone or anything. Kind of looks down at the ground. I can't fly. He starts trying to jump. You can touch the earth. Okay. You can touch foodstuffs when you've paid for it appropriately. And he was he suddenly pulls his hand back where he was about to take somebody's candy apple. <laughs> the guy's looking at him really weird. I just I just Tap his hand and go, no, bad training. Bad. <laughs> Spritz a little bit of the water from my water <laughs> from my water skin on him as well. <laughs> we are not at that level of topic yet. Right now we are just at socializing appropriately. I was waiting after you spritz him with water. I was, I was waiting for Andy. Like, he now scurries up to a tree. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You're inside of the city. There's not that many trees for him to scurry up. Thankfully. And honestly, I don't know if he's that coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking too highly of him. Yeah. You're giving him a lot of credit just yeah, because exactly. he ran. Right. I know. I know a fence here might be able to put me back into contact with some old Denzel's friends. eyes kind of shift to the side and he points at a fence smack his smack his hand but well, you were looking for a fence it, there's a fence meme on the background and Joseph is confronting the trainee and Jailus is pointed at the fence as well <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to, to look between them both and go not that kind of a fence Oh, uh, I was once told that I was a fence. I think that was a rock. <laughs> no, they they smell said I smelled like a fence. No. And I looked uh like a fence. No. Wrong word. Very good try, though. <laughs> well, they said it with uh, a, a different accent. It was a uh, offense. That 
Denzel, vocabulary lesson for the day. Offense, as in offensive, as in you looked offensive to them. You were not pleasing for them to look upon. And you His smiled. eyes have glazed over at the word vocabulary. I swear to God, I'm going to find a circlet of intelligence and I'm going to just embed it into your fucking skull. <laughs> Follow. Are we just standing here and just like down slope? You're just all walking around us as we're having this conversation. Yes. <laughs> you are as thick as t short planks. Oh, thank you. Why, thank you. You got. <laughs> Looks over at the next noble woman walk by. I'm a thick trainee. Yeah. <laughs> Underground network is gonna go swimmingly. <laughs> I just love it when the players adopt the NPC you didn't think they were gonna adopt. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me all about it. <laughs> I have a certain adventuring group with start with the letter L that like the adopt. I can imagine we could only have gone worse with Denzel if you had adopted Boblin the Goblin. <laughs> oh, gee, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we do run into Boblin the Goblin. <laughs> Maybe one day, but I knew if I introduced someone named Boblin, you were going to adopt him. <laughs> Because if they have a name, they have importance. <laughs> At least just, Denzel, you can just drop off with the local necromancer who can at least use them for components. I know. <laughs> no, yeah, Dennis is already on his way. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. Because at that point, this becomes a freaking. This becomes a, a, a James. A Brooks, a Mel Brooks comedy. <laughs> See, now the funny thing for us is that you started breaking up, so it sounded like you were so angry you couldn't, couldn't even form words. <laughs> and then just did it, did it, did it, did it, did it Mel Brooks. And then... <laughs> oh. Or if anything, that's how the trainee and yeah. Jyla heard Joseph just ran. Denzel kind of turns <laughs> over, pointing. turns to just... uh, you know, to Jyla's like, my pa always said I'm going to be uh, one day I'd be useful as fertilizer. Your pa was a wise man. <laughs> Do I hear? Do I hear the tea kettle sizzling? <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, Joseph just makes that sound and then just pulls both Jylan and Denzel towards a pub, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Denzel, I think Joseph's upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagine you're just a you just and we're now going to the courtyard being dragged by our ears like ow, <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that joseph's like five foot seven and jyleth probably towers over him like as if you know he's a small child standing over a <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's just like <laughs> uh. Making Joseph regret ever leaving the castle. <laughs> and now it's probably my internet that's freezing up because I just got a warning from Zoom that my internet connection is a little slow. So I hope everything's yeah. going smoothly. And I don't know it's here on the streaming end. Uh, no, the Zoom end it seems to be fine. Oh, okay. Zoom, Zoom keeps telling me... No, I keep adjusting my table. But Zoom keeps telling me that everything is unstable. Well, perfect. I, I, That's how this campaign is going. <laughs> Zoom understands the trick roll so well. But <laughs> we worked with it for like 
Is it close to a year now? <laughs> uh, no, we started up in February, so. Feels that way, though. <laughs> it just feels long. So, um, yeah, uh, jo- Joseph just starts pulling Jyleth and the trainee over towards a, a pub that he knows very well by the name of um, the Cross Garden Handle. And he okay. just drags them over and sits them down at a corner table and just goes, I'm getting you ales. Oh. And I'm getting you stew. Yeah. Ah. And you're going to wait here and you're going to eat them and you're going to drink. And if you need anything else, you'll come to me before you wander off. Sounds good. Okay. And then I go off and I get the ales and I get the stew and I put them on the table. <laughs> now, for anyone who hasn't seen our previous episodes, the guy in charge right now is the same guy who thought that jumping off of an enemy boat and grabbing the oar was going to be a smart idea. <laughs> now he's responsible for two adults. Okay. The food when comes. Even, when I shouldn't even be put in charge of a small kitten. <laughs> no. I have a standing rule in games that I don't give players pets because I don't think you can take care of fictional animals. That's why I never (laughs) let the previous game adopt children. Like, I don't trust you with fictional children. But, but we had, we had a Frick in the last game. And in this one, we have a (laughs) Gylus. And one day I want those two to meet. (laughs) <laughs> but I, at least, gosh, they're not exactly the same tone. But like, Jarlath has gravelly voice, but Frick, Frick's this deep voice, like orc. So it's like, yeah, I I don't when imagine you get here. Be easy. When did you get here? I'm Frick. I'm Jarlath. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a moment like the only tell way is like which one is which. <laughs> Does one sound like just chewing on gravel? That's Jarlath. <laughs> Yeah, I figured it, would, it wouldn't be the easiest thing on you, but still, it would be fun for the rest of us. <laughs> like when when Scanlan met Terry, it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> but for now, we're have we're already having a lot of focus issues. Not just the cameras, but just us. <laughs> Wait, a minute, that's normal, isn't it? Anyway, the food comes. Denzel starts eating like he hasn't had good food in days. <clears throat> which, to be fair, you have mostly been eating roasted turnips. Yep. That's kind of sweet. Wow. <laughs> but um, no. as, as soon as satisfied that those two are well into their meals, yes. he's going to go off towards another he's going to go off towards another corner. Okay. And he's going to <clears throat> tap three times on the table and then two times and then five times. He's going to look around to see if that catches anyone's attention. <clears throat> you hear uh, another tapping from a table on the other side of the room. And Joseph then taps back the response to that. And you get the uh, the response to come sit down. And Joseph goes and sits down across from the tapper. <laughs> and you are sitting across from a uh, we're gonna say as a human woman she uh got a a couple of small scars but she's relatively plain looking oh nice to see that you're still in operation well it's uh always good to have a stable job Yeah, it is. Very much. How's everything been? Profitable. Are you here to change that? No, I'm here to add to it. So, I have a proposition for the, I have a proposition for 
Well, I haven't seen you in months, and now you're coming back to propose? Well, I didn't expect you to get everybody together so quickly and a justice of the peace along with the certificates. <laughs> but yes i do have a proposition but i don't think that that ship was anywhere even near sailing for us <laughs> well are you gonna proposition me or not i'm trying to put together a uh information system an interplay of the guilds between cities. And how many cities do you have in this little network? Well, right now I have an entire kingdom. I was thinking of expanding. If you already have a kingdom, then what do you need more for? Well, figure the more that there's in, the more profit there is for everybody. Well, go ahead. Tell me about it. So, I was thinking about setting up an entire organization and having it trade secrets, information, fencing, and having it be known that Evalia could be used as one of the central hubs. And... Which kingdom is this? The kingdom of Evalia. All right, you're talking a little low. I can barely hear you. The kingdom of Evalia. And you're just making up places now, aren't you? No, I'm not, sadly. <laughs> It probably went under a different name not too long ago, but recently the princess has been ousted. She refused to take the title of queen, and there is a new king in charge in the land of Evalia. And new territory started settling myself in. Thought I might start sharing with the rest of the groups. Mm. I will say make a uh, persuasion roll at advantage. All right. How do I note advantage? <laughs> just roll twice. Uh, if it's on D&D Beyond, I, I just had to set up two dice or hit roll twice. There might be something in there. I just haven't played around with it enough to find out. 15. 15. Okay. Let me just... hmm. Well, now, darling, your plan doesn't sound too bad, but you do know that you still got a little bit of a reputation around here. And she slides over a folded piece of paper and says, let this be the, uh, the first bit of information we're willing to share. And it is, uh, it's something you've seen not too long ago, a few months back. It is a wanted poster that looks kind of like you, but like the the punk rock pirate version of you. The mohawk, a big scar across your face, a big ear, uh, like uh, the earring is like stupidly, you know, big hoop with spikes all over it. Now, someone was apparently... The one thing that... Gia, that the, 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 the only thing that Joseph will, will point out as being overly exaggerated is the nose. And he's just going to be like, why do they always get the nose wrong? <laughs> well, it, I'm not going to say that's enough for anybody to turn you in. But then again, if you find someone who's uh, looking hard enough... You may not want to be seen here too much. But your idea, it has some merit. And you know, you have to basically show her where Evolga is on a map. 
And I want to point out that if we were comparing Evalia to the other states, you'd be Rhode Island. <laughs> so, you know, the kingdom is maybe a hundred people. And, you know, there are literally dukedoms that are bigger than Evalia. I'm not going to point this out to her. <laughs> I am not going to I'm not going to to let myself be that that far open. Um Matt, what what Joseph is going to do is he's just going to set the piece of paper aside and he's just going he's just going to go I know that there's only one still open. And how can I regain the trust of the guild? Well, seeing as how she kind of slides that paper back that this looks nothing like you, I'd say we're still okay. Just thought that in the spirit of working together, I would say that you probably don't want to grow your hair out anytime soon. Nah. I kind of stopped doing that after that goblin monkey got a hold of it. Well, unless the guards suddenly start lacing their ales with Aphrodite, I don't think anybody's going to put these two together. It's just, out of professional habit, we pay a little more attention than some people. So, what do I need to do in order to get in order to get the guild in on this one? Oh, well, we like the idea. And we were happy to start sending information your way when we're in that area. Good. And I trust that uh, when we do have cargo passing through your kingdom, that uh, we won't have to worry about being uh, customs taking too close of a look. After all, you said that you the king is uh, with you. Yes. Yes, he is. And so is the trainee. He's not... So there's a king in training? Yes. <laughs> well, you're really prepared for this guy to kick the bucket, aren't you? That's not actually not a bad idea. Control the king and the king to be. <laughs> well, Joseph, you are definitely uh, thinking bigger than I ever imagined. I mean, be sort of hard to take over Wildom like that, but the idea is not bad. Oh, it's always a thought. I mean, I haven't been able to find my partner since uh, the last go around, so I figured. Might as well keep myself entertained. <clears throat> but yeah, so if, if you get any information, you guys are always welcome. Well, we will be sure to uh, send anything else along. Now, of course, that's just us. Uh, other guilds in other areas might have different opinions, but Outside of that whole uh, fiasco with the Archduke, I don't think that your plans are usually fairly solid. Speaking of the fiasco, has anybody run in, Has anybody seen anything of Lyric? She kind of uh, gets a little bit of a concerned look. Uh, I want you to make a, an insight check for me. A and nine. Nine. Why? Why does it have to be a nine? Yeah. She just kind of leans in like, um, how do you think a picture of you so badly described got out in the first place? Are you completely daft? I imagine at this point, Joseph and Denzel are probably doing something loud across the bar that reflects badly on Joseph. I can't really think of what that might be, but 
it just seems uh, appropriate timing. Where is he being held? You too. Is he still? Is he still being held? This is where she kind of gets a little bit pale. It's like, you know, you two tried to steal from the Archduke himself. He's been thrown in wrought iron. Northern or Southern Tower? Uh, Rod Iron is the opposite. It is a proper in the the bottom of a mountain dungeon. Oh, Oh, dang. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, We never really described Rod Iron, but uh, it's a pit in the earth that they throw you into, and they don't really worry too much about guards because people rarely they don't care what happens to you once you go into wrought iron. Uh, it's the sort of thing where it's like labor camp would be the wrong term, but uh, if you want food, you have to bring iron out to the guards. So it's rife with corruption all the way through. And they just don't care about the people who go in there. Like, there That's are nice. salt mine prisons that are better than working in wrought iron. When's the next changeover of the guard supposed to be so? We don't really keep track of that. Uh, they don't bother with guards except for the, the opening. They got the uh, delivery points, and that's the same point they throw you in at. Well then, <clears throat> as always, Soph, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> well, be sure to tell the bartender to uh, give you a stiff one on me, since you had, since I had to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, it's not bad news. It's actually quite good. Look, there ain't nobody on this earth I want getting thrown into wrought iron. I know, but I mean, if there's anybody that I can potentially get out of there, it's going to be Larrick. There's only been one rumor of anybody getting out of Rod Iron, and that was a rumor. Because nobody's dumb enough to even try to make up the story that they broke out of there. Yeah, I know wasn't even grandiose which is pretty much like laid inside of the iron transport and yeah pretty shit rumor but at the same time i'm not leaving Larrick in there you know that i'm not you know that nobody would <laughs> he's lucky if he's actually no he'll be lucky if he's already dead in there i but do what you're going to do it was nice doing business with you if you're going to be trying something that stupid. It's not stupid. It's No, stupid would actually imply that you put some thought into it before you went running off into frelling wrought iron. Ah, come on, self. You've got to at least have some bit of information beyond that. We don't even bother with smuggling things in there anymore. That's because the the latest warlord in charge of the place is too frailing dangerous to deal with. If you tell me how you guys used to smuggle stuff into there, it gives me a 
we had a couple of guards that were willing to do favors. They would pass things along. They don't work there anymore. Apparently, once uh, some of the inmates started showing up with bloody teeth, and they decided they wanted an easier job. So they quit and joined the army as grunts. All right. Well, looks like I've got a job to do. Thanks, Soph. She just shakes her head and wishes you will. We don't leave any one of ours behind ever. I'm not going to have that said about me when it comes to Larrick. Oh, don't you? Did anybody ever tell you that uh, anyone who gets uh, thrown into wrought iron is considered as good as dead? But go right ahead. Try to break your friend out of the underworld. Just call me. Oh, God. No. 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 Yeah. Just call me Sisyphus because I'm on a roll. <laughs> Your time's officially up. <laughs> yeah, at that point, he just goes. He just starts heading over towards Jyla. <laughs> oh, how did your interview go? Um, so we might need to talk to somebody about something in the prison. Firing prisoners now? Um, we're breaking one out. I beg your absolute pardon. He's a friend of mine. Rocks. He's my old partner. Uh, of course. And Let me guess, you go way back? Well, back when yeah. you were kids, back in the backyard throwing rocks at locos? Oh, and I used to throw rocks at people <laughs> and Please. windows. Even Giles, King Giles can predict plot lines. That's a good way to knock someone out and steal their money. You hit them with a big rock. So anyway, our newest recruit is in prison, and we have to bust him out. Yeah. Let me guess. There will be hanged at midnight if you don't act fast. No, he's going to... I'll take the guards. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to experience a vast amount of suffering pain and torture having to work inside of an iron mine until life becomes a dreaded existence which probably it already is and he either ends up at the wrong end of somebody's pickaxe or he smashes his own head in with a bit of iron ore There's a loud slurping sound from Denzel. Yes. <laughs> okay. There's a reason why they call the pit, why they call wrought iron hell. Okay. We do this. But after this, we're never going back to Nebraska ever again. <laughs> Not even if not even if it's to watch Texas A and M in the Rose Bowl. <laughs> High five to anyone who got that reference, please. <laughs> you two are way too proud of yourselves for that one. If you ever miss me, I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, is this a fade of black or a montage time? <laughs> it's gonna be a montage. <laughs> Uh, I will say that uh, planning to brave in or out of wrought iron is not going to be something you accomplish in today's session. You're actually going to need to plan this. Exactly. That's why I had a feeling. It is going to be, uh, it will be a truly challenging arc and you will need plans in place. Indeed. So Joseph, what's the plan? Uh, Jylus, <laughs> you want to you want to commit an international? First thing we're gonna do is we're going to get um, the initial plans for how wrought iron came about from the library because that was originally an iron mine and it's just become hell since then. So it might give us some semblance of something from the old days that might be still around. And then we're going to try and get an in with the guards. And we're going to really butter up the the uh, duke. Because, yeah. <laughs> so at what point do me and trainee come in? You come in for the buttering up of the duke. <laughs> You're going to be a lot more specific, my friend. The duke is a very iron, is an iron-fisted, bastard who likes to fight and likes to show off his power say no more <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to steal every bit of information from inside of his house while you do so <laughs> alright are you with me we'll do it I'll go get a rock. And he gets he walks out. <laughs> He's like, I'll help. <laughs> Make sure it's a big ass rock. Oh, you know it. Maybe something more like a cinder block will do it. <laughs> Hunting rocks. That's just... Oh, nobody's heard that musical. That's a reference that got over everybody's head. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't do a whole lot of musicals. I mean, look at me. Do I look like I've been to musical theater? I have that. been told not to sing <laughs> at musicals. All right, so so is it a nature check for look for rock? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll say it's uh, nature or investigation, whichever one you want to pick. They're both the same. Let's go. <laughs> I will do a roll for Denzel as well. All right. Jaya's got a 14 for nature. Okay. Denzel rolled a one. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so he's over there just like picking up rocks and you know, like they're mostly dirt clumps. Uh, Jaya, you find a, a fairly good sized rock, but it's still not as heavy as your sword. So maybe that's a plus. You get like a big flat rock. All right. Benzo. All right. This. Ah. Okay. Were your exact words try this? Yeah, my exact words are try this. <laughs> okay. What's your AC? 18. Okay. Uh he does not hit you with the rock, but he tries <laughs> to hit you over the head with the rock. Perfect. <laughs> the rock breaks in half when it comes into contact with your skull. And he just is like trying to face it all, or is it just pure like cartoon? <laughs> no, he it, he literally rolled a 15, so <laughs> you're like, hmm, we're going to need a heavier rock. It's like, all right. Or Oops. I can take these two, and he just turns and finds a random person. He's getting ready to club. I just grab his <laughs> hand from the shadows. <laughs> I'm going to say with his role, yes, you you stop him. Don't make me get out the rope. 
Well, I have been, uh, I've escaped the hangman's noose once or twice. The secret uh, is you kill the people so they can't con uh, talk about you. That's not escaping the hangman's noose. That's just eliminating <laughs> witnesses. And don't talk like that out in the open around here. <laughs> He's very I'd confused point... about you know the difference between uh, killing witnesses and not getting caught. <laughs> They're the same thing. No, escaping the hangman's noose is quite a bit different from <laughs> because escaping the hangman's noose means you got caught. You broke out. <laughs> All he knows is that he's avoided the gallows. By the way, you're frozen again. It, by the syllable word, <laughs> the fact that you understood escaping three syllable with three syllable word. Here's two coppers for you for increasing your vocabulary. How much is a vocabulary worth? Survey says <laughs> can, a can lifetime. I... A lifetime supply of gold. Can I just sell the vocabulary and get the gold? No, you use the vocabulary to get the gold constantly. Oh, so it's like a big rock you hit people with. Yes, although in case in, in your case, it's more like a brick that you smash people in the face with. Oh, I've done that before. He's looking for a brick now, but he can't find one. I, I just I just grab him by the scruff of the of the shirt and just start pulling him along. He just keeps <laughs> rolling ones. He's not having a good day. <laughs> That's our training. <laughs> okay. So I will say that uh any plants you want to make for breaking into wrought iron, they're not gonna be done today because I have to set things up and it's gonna take me time. <laughs> I know. That's why I said this is our montage moment. Yes. <laughs> but uh, if you want to gain a little bit of information on wrought iron, I'll let you make a roll for that. Is that an investigation check? Uh, yeah. Seriously, the first time I get to roll it in three games and it's a seven. Rod iron is a big pit in the uh, middle of the mountains. You know not to go there because it's a death sentence. People would actually ask to be killed before they're thrown into there. <laughs> I just, I just keep dragging the trainee along, and I'm just going. We're gonna need a warehouse because I swear. I will get this one trained up if it's the last thing, and it probably will be the last thing I do. <laughs> I, I just look at him and I go, I'm going to teach you how to read. And I'm going to teach you how to breathe through your nose. <laughs> My God, shut your mouth at some point. He shuts his mouth and he's doing, a, actually, he's doing a really good job of holding his breath. It's going to take him five minutes before he starts to turn color. I just, I, I just start reaching back and taking little droplets from my, from my water skin and just flicking them into his forehead just every so often just going breathe through your nose just breathe it's the exact same thing as like what you do with your mouth you just <laughs> you just keep doing it until he actually starts breathing through his nose uh make i'm trying to think does that call this an animal handling check <laughs> I don't know. Nine. <laughs> oh, God. You you have him so scared that he passed out after turning blue because I he just... refused to open his mouth to take a breath. 
I just I open his mouth for him as he's passed out on the ground. Oh, once he's grabbing. unconscious, he breathes normally. It's, that's an automatic function unless you're trying not to. I mean, I just, he's not so scared he's going to die. I just keep dragging him towards a warehouse, any warehouse, anywhere that, let, that I can rent out for this entire time being. Just pretty much going, fucking trainees. I don't what do think I have you, to do? I, considering the fact that I haven't paid you guys in a long time, I don't know how much money you actually have on you. So it might be better just to kind of montage that later on. Yeah. Uh, because that and as much as it is enjoyable to play this half wit, it's going to get old. You try to teach him <laughs> basics. We'll just say that occasionally you make an animal, animal handling check and see if you can make him more intelligent. <laughs> and that's because I honestly don't know what a better way to teach an idiot is than to call <laughs> it basic animal handling. And that comes from working with idiots. No, not you. <laughs> Could not help myself. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Uh, I, I've done production work in factories before. There are just... That's let's put it this way. There's a guy who thought that the movie wanted, you know, how they curved the bullets. He thought he could learn to do that. And then he invited me to the shooting range with him. Uh, and he wasn't even the dumbest. I've got stories for hours on these people. And they all made me say, Dear God, I'm gonna go get a vasectomy because I do not want to add to the population if you people are out there. <laughs> Ugh. So, uh, is there anything else you want to do in this session? Because you don't have to stay in Iron Rook. In fact, you can come back to Iron Rook later when you've had time to build up plans and maybe even your own personal power base. I imagine yep. at some point, Tyler will ask, do we bring the sisters to this planning? Yes, yes, we can. What if they'll they, probably... What if they probably, disagree? If they... Then, well, then... We'll just not present it like as if we're breaking into raw iron. We'll just present it like as if we're breaking into some other prison. I don't follow your logic, but okay. We'll make it a surprise for them in regards surprise. to the action. Yes. Yes. Like a prize. We're in prison. <laughs> Like an unboxing. <laughs> <laughs> like an unboxing after you've just used a wish. All right. And also one thing we're going to make sure before we do this, we need to make sure we're packing a lot of more energy. <laughs> Is that... Are you, are, are you talking the blue one or the green one? <laughs> <laughs> if we can make my energy an actual light of D, &D I imagine that people of my energy would greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, I had to deal with some real life stuff for a second. Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> Ma energy when you need to commit <laughs> fictional crimes, not real ones. Just fictional ones. <laughs> I, I, I had a tangent and I lost it after kind of, it was the blue or the green one. It's like, God dang it. <laughs> We're good at focusing. Are maybe, we? Maybe we should drink more more. Certainly. <laughs> With, any, with flavors such as Mythical Melon, <laughs> Blue Buzz, <laughs> Rip Hirami, Jungle Berry, and Green Growl. <laughs> Which, the, the label, the word show up great because the green vanishes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that really stands out. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, if I really need to disappear... Now it doesn't work anymore. Great. Thanks, my energy. You ruined the bit. 
I swear I'm going to make my energy like the haste potions in this world. <laughs> Actually, wait. No, you make Blue Buzz the haste potion. You make Rip Harambe the potion of giant strength. <laughs> And mythic melon is the is the potion of water breathing. <laughs> Denzel suddenly wakes up. For just seven seven copper, you can give sixty samples for, or sixty doses for free. Well, it's not really free because you're just paying the shipping. You're just paying them to ship it to you, and then if you like it, you can get more each month, and you can support the tricksters. And then he passes out again. <laughs> Isn't that us? We get childless. He looks into the scrying orb that follows childless everywhere when he says this. <laughs> I just look at, at childless and I go, would you like to try and establish trade with the um, Iron Duke? That's, that's the part where we go and go and fight, right? That, that's the part where we go find him and talk to him and see if he is a fan of turnips as much as our people are. Okay. <laughs> I would like to point out that neither of you have the actual uh, noble diplomacy background. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. That's Anya. <laughs> No, I forgot about that. No. Um, oh, wait. Ani is not here. If we yeah. do something stupid, we're, we're screwed. Um, like I said, this that. doesn't have to be a short term goal. Why don't we just goal? try and go find some more bandits to recruit? <laughs> to recruit because shaking the unconscious <laughs> Tenzel. I need, you know, one last cat to herd in my life. Well, you've got Iron Rook, which is, like I said, uh, a big place already. You can always, uh, you know, this is going to be something you accomplish, you know, little by little over a long time. Mm. So I think that might actually be a good place for us to call it for the night. Oh, yeah. Uh, because this has been a lot of fun, and you do have you have one more larger goal, and maybe next time you know you can travel to uh, the country across the, the the mountains, which you'll have to sail to, but you can go to Alistar, where tournaments might actually be a lot more popular. <laughs> oh no, I remember Alistar. Yes, I've been wanting to use that country for a long time. Oh no. Hey, it's only the land of death and ice. And a very psychotic um, bard who is running around freezing people. No, that was in a different variation of the world. Oh, okay. Remember, the things from uh, Expendable Crew don't always cross over into here because i don't have a world bible i'm making this stuff up as i go <laughs> i know you look at me and you think that andy guy he's got it all together but no i don't write crap for this anymore because when i do write a storyline you two go off and do something very random yes <laughs> you not only break the fourth wall you break through the fifth and sixth walls and come back the other side maybe <laughs> uh so as far as like uh any lore from the previous game we're not really in a specific time frame so you know psychotic bards running around freezing people may or may not have happened may it may be in a totally different world so let's not cross the streams that much <laughs> because i don't think i can necessarily take it but Anyway, I will let this, uh, you know, breaking into Iron Rook be something that, or uh, wrought iron, I mean, be something that you kind of, uh, you can spend a little bit of time working on. I know that for us, you know, 
planning outside the game isn't always the easiest thing, but you know, it at least give me a chance to build up the uh, the infrastructure, and okay. that way you will have a proper challenge. And I will also say that just based on the rumors, you think that this might be something you want to do when you have more personal power. You can try it at fourth level. I'm just saying you might become, you know, the stream might become you try and survive in rod iron if you do that. <laughs> that could be a lot of fun too. So, but anyway, thank you so much for those of you who chose to join us today. We do appreciate it. Uh, we hope to have the whole cast back in two weeks. And I, there are things in motion. There, there are plans. There are big plans. The plans are not necessarily good. <laughs> <laughs> the plan might be to keep this idiot Denzel around and not use him for I wouldn't even use this guy for cheap labor because he <laughs> will forget what he's doing uh, uh, I will say in the book that I borrowed these two from it's called Johannes Cabal the Necromancer Ooh. and he very and he does decide these two do not belong in the gene pool and he turns them into zombies and then he <laughs> regrets turning them into zombies because they're still idiots it's a different flavor yeah they just quit talking but uh no they're they're wonderful idiots and one of them is now guarding the post because he's a skull on a bike oh okay <laughs> This game is always so delightfully weird, and I have so much fun with it. So thank you, Kyle and Jesse, who have their own you uh, Twitch streams. Would okay. you like to tell us about your Twitch streams? Jesse first. <laughs> sure. So I'm known on the internet as Trump64. That is same as through all my socials and under my Twitch. I uh, you can always find me on our Sunday nights where I play with. My D and D group, the Lovely Lady Crumps, and they are currently ongoing in an escape mission. They were able to kill the big bad, but now they have to make their way out alive. So, will they make <laughs> make it out? Only one way to find out. <laughs> they have eight minutes to do it. <laughs> oh God, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, it's just that was the one thing. If you and I know this is gonna be slight spoilers, but for yeah. people that missed the last session. He had to, it is after the big bad you rolled 2d4 to determine how many minutes the kid had to escape and aspire just like please just let it be max four four and it's like so this is the so they got the maximum amount of time they could have ever got wow <laughs> good for them yes i mean probably bad for them too because eight minutes to escape i gotta put you guys on a time limit like that one day not that I'm stealing plans. <laughs> Not like you're going to have to make a daring escape anytime in the, soon, the near future. Kyle. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can catch me on uh, my Twitch at FlintYouWood756 um, Wednesday nights with Nick, who I do um, a podcast Beyond the Spine with. And every other Sunday, you can catch me on there as well doing... Um, vampire the requiem first edition with uh andy as well yes so who has who has come up with a vampire archetype in our chat that is very very much one that i would like to see done but i don't want him to retire ragtag just yet oh yeah uh the i'm forgetting his name uh the guy who does uh vampire the masquerade uh carl something uh, forget his actual name, but he uh, was posting pictures of uh, the uh, gothic skates. They're like Victorian skates. Knee-high boots with wheels on them. Uh, and I was like, I need to retire Ragtag so I can play the skating vampire. Granted, I could have just taken somebody who died in the 80s and you know never gave up the skates, but something about the idea of uh, a dashing Victorian suit and just skates everywhere. Just appeals to me. And he rides a penny farthing around. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back in two weeks. 
check out the other guys' streams because I'm on one of them uh, every other week, and I'm here randomly. I hope to pick this up more as time allows. But anyway, we will see you next time. Farewell. <laughs>